a scalar has a magnitude but no direction. For example, we define temperature as just 25 degrees centigrade and the definition is complete without a direction. Speed is also a scalar. As we say, the car is moving at 30 kilometers per hour without mentioning the direction. Vectors have both magnitude and direction. We describe the velocity as the car is moving 30 km per hour east or west. The direction is what differentiates speed and velocity. Therefore, velocity is a vector and speed is a scalar. Distance is the actual path taken. So, if you drive between two cities, the distance is the odometer reading. Distance is a scalar. Displacement is the shortest distance between two points. So, it is the path taken by a bird from one city to another in a straight line. Displacement is a vector and the direction is important. If you went from one city to another and back, your displacement would be zero. But your distance would be the actual path taken. The displacement versus time graph is a straight line at constant velocity. If the velocity is increased, the graph appears steeper. The displacement versus time graph is a straight line at constant velocity. If the velocity is increased, the graph appears steeper. Here, you will see that the ball comes back to its original position, so its displacement is zero. But the distance traveled is twice the distance between the original position of the ball and the wall. Here you will see that the ball comes back to its original position so its displacement is zero. But the distance traveled is twice the distance between the original position of the ball and the wall. Velocity is the distance traveled in unit time. The car passes lampposts every second, which light up as the car passes them. Since the time taken between two successive lampposts is a second, the velocity here will be the distance between the successive lampposts. Velocity is the distance traveled in unit time. The car passes lampposts every second, which light up as the car passes them. Since the time taken between two successive lampposts is a second, the velocity here will be the distance between the successive lampposts. Distance is the product of velocity and time. The faster the velocity, the less time it takes to cover the same distance. Distance is the product of velocity and time. 
the faster the velocity, the less time it takes to cover the same distance. If the velocity time graph is plotted, it reveals some interesting information. If you measure the area under the graph, you get the distance traveled by the car. At higher speeds, the graph is higher. If the velocity time graph is plotted, it reveals some interesting information. If you measure the area under the graph, you get the distance traveled by the car. At higher speeds, the graph is higher, but the time taken is less for the same distance. If you measure it again, it should match with the area computed when the velocity was lower. Velocity is a vector. Note that after bouncing the wall, its sign changes. Velocity is a vector. Note that after bouncing the wall, its sign changes. As the ball travels towards the wall, the velocity time graph is positive. After the ball rebounds and changes direction, the velocity time graph is now negative. If you add the areas before and after rebound, they give you the distance. If you add the areas before and after rebound, considering the area after rebound as negative, the total area will be zero. This is the displacement. Velocity is a vector. Note that after bouncing the wall, its sign changes. As the ball travels towards the wall, the velocity time graph is positive. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. When the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero. When the velocity is constant, the car covers equal distances in the same time interval. When it is accelerating, the distance covered in successive time intervals keeps growing. Acceleration is computed by dividing the change in velocity between any two successive points by the time taken to move between those points. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. When the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero. When the velocity is constant, the car covers equal distances in the same time interval. When it is accelerating, the distance covered in successive time intervals keeps growing. Acceleration is computed by dividing the change in velocity between any two successive points by the time taken to move between those points. The distance traveled by an accelerating car can be computed as ut plus half at squared. Note that the first part ut is the distance traveled if the car was traveling with a constant velocity and not accelerating. The second part half at squared is the extra distance covered due to the acceleration. The distance traveled by an accelerating car can be computed as ut plus half at squared. Note that the first part ut is the distance traveled if the car was traveling with a constant velocity and not accelerating. The second part, half at squared, is the extra distance covered due to the acceleration. The distance traveled by an accelerating car can be computed as ut plus half at squared. Note that the first part, ut, the final velocity is the initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time. The final velocity is the initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time.
The final velocity is the initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time. The final velocity is the initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time. You will now notice that the displacement time graph is not a straight line when the car is accelerating. It will be a curve. The graph is a straight line the car travels at constant velocity. You will now notice that the displacement time graph is not a straight line when the car is accelerating. It will be a curve. The graph is a straight line the car travels at constant velocity. You will now notice that the displacement time graph is not a straight line when the car is accelerating. It will be a curve. The graph is a straight line the car travels at constant velocity. You will now notice that the displacement time graph is not a straight line when the car is accelerating. It will be a curve. The graph is a straight line the car travels at constant velocity. You will now notice that the displacement time graph is not a straight line when the car is accelerating. It will be a curve. The graph is a straight line the car travels at constant velocity. You will now notice that the displacement time graph is not a straight line when the car is accelerating. It will be a curve. When the car is accelerating, the velocity time graph is a straight line. The area under the graph is the distance traveled by the car. If the car was not accelerating, the graph would have been flat. When the car is accelerating, the velocity time graph is a straight line. The area under the graph is the distance traveled by the car. If the car was not accelerating, the graph would have been flat. When the car is accelerating, the velocity time graph is a straight line. The area under the graph is the distance traveled by the car. If the car was not accelerating, the graph would have been flat. When the car is accelerating, the velocity time graph is a straight line. The area under the graph is the distance traveled by the car. If the car was not accelerating, the graph would have been flat. Deceleration is negative acceleration. At every instant, the velocity of the car reduces uniformly. When a car moves after starting, it accelerates as the velocity increases from zero. When a car comes to a halt, it decelerates as the velocity reduces to zero. Deceleration is negative acceleration. At every instant, the velocity of the car reduces uniformly. When a car moves after starting, it accelerates as the velocity increases from zero. When a car comes to a halt, it decelerates as the velocity reduces to zero.
This graphs a complete drive with acceleration, uniform velocity and deceleration. When the car accelerates, the graph rises. When the velocity is constant and the acceleration zero, the graph stays flat. And when the car decelerates, the graph falls. Again, measuring the area under the graph will give you the distance traveled. This graphs a complete drive with acceleration, uniform velocity and deceleration. When the car accelerates, the graph rises. When the velocity is constant and the acceleration zero, the graph stays flat. And when the car decelerates, the graph falls. Again, measuring the area under the graph will give you the distance traveled. This graphs a complete drive with acceleration, uniform velocity and deceleration. When the car accelerates, the graph rises. When the velocity is constant and the acceleration zero, the graph stays flat. And when the car decelerates, the graph falls. Again, measuring the area under the graph will give you the distance traveled. Normally, when we think of linear movement, intuitively, we feel that when the speed does not change, the velocity does not change, and therefore, the acceleration should be zero. However, in circular motion, the velocity is tangential to the motion. Since the tangent changes at each point on the circle, the velocity direction changes. Hence, changing velocity, although speed remains constant. Since velocity changes, there must be acceleration present. This is kind of non-intuitive. When we normally see things in nature, we expect an elephant to land faster than an ant. This happens in normal circumstances due to air resistance. However, in vacuum, they both land at the same time. In the distance equation, when the initial velocity is zero, the distance covered is half AT squared. Notice that it did not depend on the mass and that both the ant and the elephant are subjected to the same acceleration, which is gravity. This is kind of non-intuitive. When we normally see things in nature, we expect an elephant to land faster than an ant. This happens in normal circumstances due to air resistance. However, in vacuum, they both land at the same time. In the distance equation, when the initial velocity is zero, 